For our vision tracking and turret control, we utilize a 10 millisecond thread. This allows for us to process vision and puts an update our turret position twice as fast as our main thread would. On top of this, we use vision data to estimate an encoder set point which is sent to the turret. This is used in on-the-fly profile control, running directly on the motor controller at 1 kHz. These increased processing speeds help us achieve consistently accurate turret positioning, even while rotating or translating at higher velocities. One of the biggest highlights of our vision system this year is our ability to shoot from anywhere on the field while rotating or translating in any direction. To do this, we first get an estimate distance from the goal using our Limelight's Y angular offset data, and we have empirically interpolated a relationship between our distance and our desired shooter velocity and hood angle set points. Using this, we're able to instantaneously calculate the ideal shot for our hood angle and our shooter speed given any distance from the target or angular offset from the target. When intaking, we experience issues with our indexer jamming at higher velocities. To combat the issue without reducing the speed at which we can intake and shoot, we implemented an anti-jam function for the indexer. This function monitors the current drawn from the indexer's motor, and if it detects a sustained current spike above 8 amps, it switches the direction of the indexer dislodging the jammed ball. To maximize the efficiency of our sword drive's movements during the autonomous period, we have programmed our very own path generator GUI. This allows us to calculate S-curve profiles based off of control vectors with the option of choosing between various interpolation techniques based on different applications. We then follow these paths very accurately using our adaptive pure pursuit controller, which reads inputs from our localization technique of odometry. To provide enhanced control over our agile sword drive in the telea period, we take in our rotational and translational inputs independently and then put the two together in our swerve drive inverse kinematics. We also rotate our translational input by our robot's heading to allow for our driver to have a complete field-centric approach in his navigation. Thanks for watching.